Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the idea of Mega Earths. Planets that are very Earth-like, that are out there in our galaxy, but that are extremely extremely massive in comparison to our own planet. There's only three we've discovered so far and today we're going to discuss them all using Space Engine and Universe Sandbox 2. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So a mega earth is actually a relatively new concept that was discovered and defined not so long ago, uh, only a couple of years ago, uh, back in 2015, 2014. And uh, this concept basically um, identifies these super, super, super massive planets that are terrestrial. They're basically just like Earth. They have actual surface. They might even have liquid on, on, the, on the surface. But the difference is that they're tremendously massive. Well, okay, not tremendously, but they're as massive as Neptune and Uranus. And so today we're going to use Space Engine first to go and find out where those three mega Earths are located. And we're also going to go and take a look at them, land on them, possibly walk around on them, and then recreate at least one of them in Universe Sandbox. So the first object we're going to go to is known as Kepler 10C. This is an object discovered by Kepler telescope and is located something like 560 light years away from us. It's right there, we're coming toward it. Uh, this was discovered um, back in 2011, but we didn't really uh, define it as a mega earth until very recently because we actually thought this was a gas giant because of its mass and its mass is about 17 uh, at least 17 masses of earth maybe even 17.2 masses of earth now this is what it looks like in space engine I'm going to just accelerate time a little bit just so you can see how it spins around on its orbit as well and you can kind of see that there's atmosphere there's even what seems to be some sort of a liquid maybe Although, not entirely sure what that is, but uh, so this object is currently known as a uh, desert megacarbonia, meaning that it's a, actually a carbon planet as opposed to an oxygen planet. In other words, there's quite a lot of carbon compounds, um, compounds and materials here. Um, our Earth mostly has oxygen materials. And because of this carbon, it's probably um, what makes this a terrestrial planet and probably what makes this a a mega earth as well but there's possibly other explanations as well so let's actually change the lightning a little bit so we can see this from all of the angles and there's that star that it orbits and this star kepler 10 is actually um, a typical yellow dwarf kind of relatively similar to our own sun just a little bit less massive but let's uh let's land on the kepler 10c and let's see what the surface of this planet looks like, exoplanet specifically. Now this is our first mega earth and this is probably one of the more famous ones and right there you can actually even see a volcano. Now remember this is procedurally generated so this is not exactly what it looks like in real life but this is our best interpretation of what it might look like. So right now we're actually going to be going through the atmosphere and we're going to be uh, landing right next to this volcano. And we're going to see what's inside of the volcano as well. Uh, we can also actually see quite a lot of atmospheric pressure on this planet. But there is that volcano that we saw from the orbit. I don't really know what that is, but this doesn't look like anything we have on Earth. And the, the something that looked like a liquid turns out to be not a liquid at all. So if we actually approach it, you'll see that it's sort of a, a hard surface, almost like a salt-like surface that you can stand on, you can walk on. So this is really a desert. It's a huge, very, very massive, very hot desert. And the gravitational attraction on the surface of this planet is uh, about 3.2 times the gravity on Earth. In other words, it's um, close to 30 meters per second square, which is actually kind of similar to Jupiter. So here you would not feel very light at all. As a matter of fact, you would probably have a lot of your bones uh, challenge and maybe even broken by even walking around. So this is Kepler 10C. Let's go to the next one. This is actually also from the Kepler mission, but from the mission that was started over a few years ago known as K2. And here the object is known as K23D. 
This is another hot desert, and this is also a, car a carbon world, also known as Mega Carbonia. But you can see that it actually looks kind of different. The mass here is also not as uh, big as the previous planet. It's only about 11.7 masses of Earth, um, or actually 11.1 .1 masses of Earth, or possibly even less. It might even be close to seven masses of Earth. So there's actually quite a lot of speculation about the actual mass. But if you land on this planet, you will see this. Basically a very, very dense, very hot, desert world with very high temperatures. Here the temperature is about 300 degrees Celsius and also quite a high atmospheric pressure of 800 atmospheres. The gravity on the surface is a little bit higher at 4.8 um, masses of, or I guess gravitational uh, forces of Earth. In other words, it's 4.8 times as um, gravitationally potent as our planet on the surface. So here you would feel 4.8 times heavier. And it looks very ominous, very scary. And then this game even has a bit of rings right there. You can kind of see the rings appear if you, um, if you accelerate time, they'll also start spinning as well. So this unusual world is also known as Epic 2013-67065D. Uh, and it orbits a very similar star to our sun as well. And this is once again a terrestrial planet. And the third object we're going to go to is um, actually relatively new in terms of discoveries. And it orbits a star known as BD20594. We're going to go and visit this world, uh, but before we go, I actually wanted to mention one more thing. So, for the most part, these planets orbit relatively close to, to their home star. Uh, and specifically here, the distance is about 0.2 astronomical units, and one single orbital period takes about 45 days. Now, this is actually even closer than Mercury is to the Sun. And so this kind of creates an idea that maybe just maybe we actually had these types of planets in our solar system as well, known as super Earths, and they collided with stuff and created planets like Earth, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. This is actually something I mentioned in one of the videos I made um, a few days ago. Anyway, let's go to the last mega Earth, the object known as BD2594b. And this is yet another hot desert and yet another mega carbon world. This object is about 16.3 masses of our own Earth and the gravity here is about 3.3 uh, gravitational attractions of Earth. In other words, it's once again close to about 30 meters per second square. High temperatures, high atmospheric pressure, high everything. So not a very comfortable world to live on and not a world that you would be uh, really tempted to go to, or if you were to land here, this wouldn't be very easy to escape from because of the gravity and because of the high atmospheric pressure. So this is what the surface looks like. Not very hospitable. Don't expect to find a lot of life here. And if there is a life on these planets, it's going to be very, very extreme. Probably scary, really extreme. Yeah, you wouldn't want to face the aliens from this planet. So that's the three objects I wanted to show you in Space Engine. And right now we're going to go to Universe Sandbox and actually try to recreate at least one of them or just a general idea of Mega Earth and compare it to the actual Earth as well. And to try to understand what a Mega Earth is, we basically need to take a planet like Neptune and place it next to our own planet. We actually might have to even disable gravity here just to make this a little bit easier. And we're going to place Neptune right next to Earth. So imagine a planet that's as massive as Neptune, but pretty much the same size or slightly bigger than the actual Earth. And there is Earth right there. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to contract Neptune until it kind of looks more Earth-like. So let's try to do this by essentially increasing the amount of iron it has on the inside and amount of silicates as well. So you'll notice that it already started changing shape. And on top of that, we're also going to make sure that its density is really high. So it is pretty high here. And that its radius is maybe just about two times the radius of Earth. So here we're going to modify just a little bit until it becomes only about two radii of Earth. So this right here is a perfect example of a mega Earth. 
the essentially limit of how big uh, terrestrial planets can get before turning into gas giants. Now we're not sure if they can even become bigger, but so far these are the biggest ones we've discovered in our galaxy. Now, it doesn't look very different from Earth in terms of size, but in terms of mass it's tremendously larger. And if I were to re-enable the gravity here right now, which I'm gonna do by going to simulation again and re-enabling the gravity, you'll see that, well, Earth is going to get attracted to it really, really quickly because of the massive amount of uh, gravity that this object has. And interestingly, these mega-Earths are probably a lot more common than we even think because there's a lot of super-Earths out there, but we're not really sure if all of them are gas giants. Many of them might actually be terrestrial in origin. And so you can see Earth just fell onto the, this mega-Earth mega that we created. And, oh wow, now it also destroyed it completely. Well, that's a bug. I'm not gonna consider this to be a real thing. But anyway, let's actually go back to our solar system and place one of these mega Earths in orbit around the sun so that you can actually see where we've discovered most of them so far. So let's actually choose Kepler 10c, which is the most massive of the bunch, and it's almost as massive, or actually even more massive, than um, our beautiful Neptune. So we're going to place it right here here and place it at the distance where it is from its actual uh, star and this is what it would look like in our own solar system so it's an object that is very massive very very dense yet uh, orbits closer than mercury and we think that maybe just maybe we also had these objects in our own solar system a long time ago and these created the planets we have today and so that's the idea of Mega Earth, and this hopefully answers the question that many of you have been asking, you know, how big can a terrestrial planet actually get? And before I finish this video, I actually wanted to thank uh, wonderful supporters on Patreon. I wanted to thank all of the subscribers for making this channel what it is today, and also the new educational sponsor known as Brilliant.org. Brilliant.org is actually a pretty cool website that allows you to study many of the topics that many people find difficult and challenging using, well, essentially active approach. You solve problems by doing them instead of reading about them. You go into a topic, you decide what you want to study, and then it asks you to actually try to solve things using your understanding of what you read or watched. And here, if you get stuck, you can always look at the solution and find the answer that's actually described very, very well. Now, the cool thing about this website is that it has a tremendous amount of topics already. Anything from math to science to things like finances, probability, and even space. And this is why I like this website so much because there's actually a growing amount of topics on physics, astronomy, gravitational physics, solar energy, which is coming really soon, and a lot of other stuff that I'm really, really excited to teach you guys as well. But for now, go check it out. The link for this website is in the description below. And thank you, Brilliant, for being an amazing supporter of this channel. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's finish this video by creating a bit of an explosion out of Kepler 10 c And let's watch it explode in real time. See you tomorrow. Space out. And as always... Bye-bye.